According to a United States Senator from Illinois, Senator Sherman claims that the Mormons were driven from Missouri and then Illinois because they were active abolitionists and preaching anti-slavery. Have you ever heard that? I've never heard that. I've never heard one Mormon scholar, pro or anti, really address Joseph Smith's anti-slavery preaching being the cause of the saints being driven from Missouri and Illinois. Well, if the Utah Mormon Church lied to us then, why wouldn't they continue to lie to us now? And they're lying in their new Mormon essays. Yes, those new Mormon essays that are being used as talking points to dismantle and asset strip the Utah Mormon saints. Can you imagine that a century and a half of Mormon scholars writing about Joseph Smith have failed to even mention the most burning issues that defined ministers of Joseph Smith's ministry. All ministers were divided into two groups, pro-slavery ministers, those were the Methodists, and abolitionist ministers, those were the Mormons and the Campbellites. Fortunately, there was one historian, Herbert Spencer Salisbury, did not forget to write Joseph Smith's history in regard to this most interesting pre-Civil War time, which punctuated by pro-slavery ministers and anti-slavery ministers. That is why whenever the Mormons are assaulted by the Mobocrats, they're always led by a Methodist preacher. In his lecture to the Illinois Historical Society, Historian Salisbury explains Joseph Smith's family's aristocratic blue blood stemming out of New York, and then goes on to claim that it would not be unusual to expect Joseph Smith and Hiram Smith to create their own ministry preaching against slavery. In the light of these facts, it does not appear so extraordinary that Joseph Smith should start a religious brief reformation and contend for his rights and his cause undeterred by persecution, even death itself, which reached him so tragically in the historic city of Carthage, two blocks from where this is written. This is written by a Senator O. F. Berry in his lecture before the Illinois State Historical Society, pages 89. When Joseph Smith led his band of New England patriots to Western Missouri in the early 30s and began preaching against slavery, the Missourians received them as they did other New England abolitionists, John Brown, with fire and the sword. In the meantime, they were preaching against slavery. It is sufficient here to say that it is not strange that talking and preaching against slavery, as they both did publicly and privately, they roused the enmity of the Southern slaveholders. And they were driven out of Missouri, not on account of their religious teachings in any particular, but because their political doctrines, and while I am informed that many of their ablest men insisted that it would be wise to refrain from teaching or preaching against the cruelty of slavery, most of the elders and preachers refused to do so, and it resulted in great persecution and finally driving them from Missouri. From there, the Mormons came to Hancock County, which were headquarters for the Mormon Church in 1839 to 1846. Senator Barry's ablest researches are in particular in contrast. Remember, this is a senator from Illinois himself. The abolitionists were not tolerated in this state because they were mostly Southerners and were pro-slavery. Uh, just as the abolitionists were not tolerated seven years earlier in Princeton, Chicago, a few places, Elijah Lovejoy, the New England abolitionist, was killed by a pro-slavery mob in Alton, Illinois, seven years before Joseph Smith was killed at Nauvoo by a similar mob. And Carr tells it in the Illini that Owen Lovejoy, in preaching against slavery in Princeton, Illinois, was in danger of assassination. Colonel Carr further states that the Eastern abolitionists, although men of education, were feared by these pro-slavers in Illinois. Um, Senator Berry also further states 
that the negative Mormon stories originated not from actual facts, but from the false accusations of these pro-slavery Illinois families, and they have no idea the real cause of enmity between the Southern-born ancestors and the New York Mormons was the abolitionist preachings of the Mormon community. Well, I believe a U.S. Senator from Illinois and the Illinois Historical Society make it very clear. The Mormons were run out of first Missouri and then Illinois for their anti-slavery preaching and activity. Have you ever heard a Mormon scholar refer to this as being the cause of the Mormons being run out of Missouri and Illinois? Well, I've never heard a Mormon scholar say this. Can you imagine that all of these Mormon scholars have failed to address this most historical movement during the 19th century, which was civil war and pro-slave states and anti-slave states and the division between religions that were identified either as anti-slavery and pro-slavery. And Joseph Smith was an anti-slavery minister. Can you imagine? What are they trying to conceal? What are they trying to conceal? They're trying to conceal that they destroyed the Joseph Smith Church, infiltrated it with Brighamites who were pro-slavery, fooled, peace-loving, civilized Mormons into moving out to Utah and turning Utah into a slave state. They moved out from Illinois. Illinois was a free state. Free blacks could move there and be free, just as in Missouri, north of the Mason-Dixon line, those interracial Mormons were free in Missouri, but driven out, just as Salisbury states driven out because they were interracial and they were voting in abolitionist anti-slavery laws. That's what the issue was. It wasn't anything else, but yes, it was based on religion, but the religion of pro-slavery versus anti-slavery. Joseph Smith was anti-slavery. Brigham Young, pro-slavery and working for the British oligarchs to destroy the United States.